-hmm. And um, it was after I had lost my job uh, due to some medical condition and uh, I could not perform as per the expectations of my employer. So I was pushed out and I was I I went to some extent I went into depression. Uh, so that is when I decided that uh, before then I had some groups that I used to run. I used to post jobs there and uh, uh, had um, about six WhatsApp groups for the job seekers. Mm -hmm. So some job seekers could call me and ask me that, Jay, we need someone to do our CVs. So I used to refer them to another lady who used to do the CVs. But uh, back in my mind, uh, I wasn't happy with the work she was doing. So because uh, formerly I had done HR as a course, and had never practiced. So this was the only opportunity I had to practice. Um, so I decided that uh, why not uh, venture into this? Uh, why not do the CVs? So I did a poster, my first poster in December 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, I shared in the groups. So in the first week, uh, I had no knowledge. Uh, something funny is that I had no knowledge uh, on how to use a, a computer or a laptop. Mm -hmm. I had never done that at school. Mm -hmm. So when I had this opportunity, I used to do it with my phone. Okay. Then I could transfer the data to a laptop, go to the cyber, and have uh, someone at the cyber guide me on how to maybe merge the lines and uh, uh, format the content on the on the of the CV, so through that, in the first month and the second month, I was just learning on how to do it, on how to use the laptop. So that's how JCVs came about, and uh, also something to notice that uh, after I lost my job, I really wanted something to do with the HR. I applied for internships, I got rejected. Uh, one of my current mentors employed me for two weeks. She fired me. <laughs> so um, it's all thanks to everyone who rejected me that uh, it brought up JCVs. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would like to find out your, like your mental uh, state or space when you decided to uh, just move on. Uh, considering your story, there's a level of uh, rejection that will that happen, and most people, young people especially, we go to numerous interviews after interviews, just trying to uh, to just bag a job opportunity, but it doesn't come our way, and then depression kicks in. So, what was your mental state? What what happened for you to make that shift and decide? You know what? I am going to create a job for me. Now, uh, the first thing after I lost my job, the first thing I did. Was to, I contacted my former HR. I told her that I would like just to volunteer for free. Then uh, after I told her that, I gave her that information, she could not pick my calls again. Mm -hmm. So the second, there was an advert for an intern. Mm -hmm. They needed fresh graduates. But by then I had 11 years working experience. So I went for the interview. I got invited for the interview. I told them I would volunteer. I was willing to volunteer. And you have 11, 11 years working experience. Okay. okay. So the company also rejected me. They told me that, uh, how will you survive? I told them I'm okay, even though I had no any source of income. Mm -hmm. I, will not, I had no any way of getting to work. And it was almost, uh, it was uh, within Wilson Airport. Mm -hmm. So I will spend around 400 per day to and fro, from work. Eh? Mm -hmm. So uh, after that rejection, I saw, I felt na, uh, the pity that the job seekers feel when they are looking for jobs. So I was in a position now to influence something. I was in a, pos a position now to do something for the job seekers. Because, uh, you know, I, I initially I, I, will, I, will, I had the responsibility because uh, most of the job seekers will call me, the people I don't know, and I will link them to jobs with the HR uh, managers that I didn't know also. So I got that. Uh, uh, trust from the HR people and also trust from the job seekers. So I saw that if I could get into a full-time employment, mm -hmm. I will not serve them well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. So the rejection led me to uh, having the, now enough time to do what I wanted to do now, giving back to the community. So that's how I started the, this company and um, also that's how uh, 
I really wanted now. I had now the opportunity now to do it full time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Uh, from uh, what I've picked from what you've said is that, especially when you mentioned that you had over a decade experience in your line of job, but you're offering to actually volunteer, yeah. and people were saying no. Let's look at the aspect of desperation. And uh, uh, from what you've learned, I don't know if it, if it is, if you can label it as such, uh, from the context of anyone can be qualified particular position, but. Uh, would you feel like desperation can also be a, a state of rejection on arrival? For me, uh, the point I was in, that was desperation. Mm -hmm. To be honest, that was desperation because uh, now I was working in a different, a totally different line. Yes. And um, I'd worked for 11 years now by then. And uh, having done HR at school, I had never practiced. Mm -hmm. So now, the only way I could now get into the market was through HR. And getting to the market through HR, it's so competitive. There are so many HR out here, so many HR personnel without jobs out here. So the only way I could do that is was to gain experience first, then get into the market. Mm -hmm. And by gaining experience, I needed just to volunteer first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, volunteer now for like three months, then get into the market. So desperation was the reason I was doing this. I had no otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think uh, what we do, what we do most of, mo mo nowadays is that uh, you've, uh, most people have done different courses, but they are in totally different fields. Mm -hmm. When you finish, when you are in a totally different field for three years, your career goes, uh, you move out of your career f uh, totally. Mm -hmm. And getting back to your career will be so difficult. That mm -hmm. is what what is happening nowadays. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who've done finance, they're doing customer service. I've seen people who've done HR, they're doing sales. When you do three years, that means that your salary might be higher. You might be even be earning 60000 mm -hmm. You might even be earning 100000 mm -hmm. So when you want to go back to your career, mm -hmm. you'll have to start from zero. Ah. So no one will want to come from 100 yeah. to 30000 or 100 to 20,000. Sure. So and is it possible? For instance, if I I, uh, I, I did law and I found myself into probably sales and marketing and I feel like in my journey right now, I want to go back to practicing law. So will, uh, how do you go about that? Like you have to be humble enough to start. Yeah, you have to be scratch. humble enough to start f from the lowest point. Okay. So now that is now what we call passion. Mm -hmm. For me, it was passion now. I had now to live uh, money for passion. Mm -hmm. So even when I was starting JCVs, I, I, to be honest, I didn't know if I would survive in Nairobi. And uh, per month I could roughly get uh, less than 10,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my salary, the, the other side was around over 20,000. So the difference, I could not even manage paying bills. Huh? Mm -hmm. So at this point, at this point, uh, when when you, you are in a different field, like for me, I was there for 10 years. Coming back to HR, I had to start with internship. Mm -hmm. So that was the only way out. Either start with internship or go into self-employment. Okay. So I opted for the second because I was rejected in the first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. All right. When you speak about now, you've decided to get into self-employment. Yeah. You're a sole proprietor now. Uh, who are your first client and what made you feel like actually this can be a business after all now well uh, i had several people calling me okay <coughs> my first excuse me my first when i, I did my first group while well, i was working with them um, my employer was naivas right. i used to work with naivas so i made i created the first group mm -hmm. i remember it was in april 2016. Mm -hmm. just out of nowhere i didn't know the role of this group I just created the, my first group. So I used to post jobs there. Mm -hmm. So the first group wo uh, was filled and uh, there were more people wanting to come on, on board. So I decided that uh, we, sh we can do a Telegram group. Mm -hmm. But Telegram people were uh, reluctant. They told me, no, Telegram, we, we, we don't like Telegram. Just do a second WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. So I did the second WhatsApp group. So by the time I was getting, I was, I was um, Starting the business, I had six WhatsApp groups, okay. which you can only be in one group. So six WhatsApp groups, those are around uh, 3,000 people. And that's just your client? Yeah. All right. 
so I could post jobs or I, I was also in HR groups so I could see a HR post a job she's uh, is looking he or she is looking for someone in this field for an accountant I call the HR I tell them that I have someone who is fit for this job so I post in the groups my WhatsApp groups then uh, I'm looking for an accountant with these and these qualifications so someone will reach out <coughs> so I link him to the HR mm -hmm. so people could get jobs through that in that direction so um, and some now could call me and tell me that Jay I really need someone to work on my CV so I used to send them to another lady and uh, mm -hmm. the lady could just she had one template mm -hmm. so all CVs had a similar template so I felt that mm -hmm. she was not doing a good job mm -hmm. you know when the CVs have a similar template and uh, they are in the same group mm -hmm. they'll, tom they'll automatically apply for the same position mm -hmm. if it's an accountant and an accounts assistant position they like apply for an accounts assistant position mm -hmm. so the accounts assistant position uh, the recruiter will see that uh, the content is similar mm -hmm. so they he might not consider them okay so that that is what uh, pushed me now to start doing CVs. Mm -hmm. So when I did a post and posted in the groups, I had, uh, the first week I got three clients. By then I was charging 500, Bob. I got three clients. The second week it grew. So uh, after the second week, I went for another, by then I used to go for every forum, every HR forum that was announced. Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, it had uh, an entrance fee or not i could mm -hmm. go for the mm -hmm. forum so i really wanted i was now passionate i really wanted to get into hr now you had it was all hands in now yeah. into the business yeah speaking about cvs is it better to position yourself uh, as a gener generalist like general like you you don't special uh, do a special specialization on your cv or do you go generic what would you be what would be your advice when it comes to resume uh, creation no, um, one thing about resume and uh, CV is that uh, <coughs> they are the same thing. Mm -hmm. It just uh, resume is in, uh, used in French mm -hmm. and then uh, CV, and the resume might be shorter than mm -hmm. the CV. So one thing about the CV is that uh, depending on your career, mm -hmm. if you are an accountant, if you are um, a journalist, if you are a reporter, if that is your field, that is what you want to venture into. Mm -hmm have your CV customized to fit that role. Mm -hmm. If you're an accountant, you're working as a sales personnel, mm -hmm. or if you're an accountant, you're working as a customer service personnel, and you want to go back into accounting, have it customized. You can fit the two roles. Job description. Yeah, yeah? have it customized to the job description. Mm -hmm. But still, you can have your CV fit two or three more roles. Okay. Yeah. How? Hmm? How? <laughs> now that's where JCVs comes in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh -huh. uh, let's say um, you're doing accounts and mm -hmm. you're working in an administrative department. Okay. So, uh, in most companies, uh, mm -hmm. what I, what, what, uh, from my experience, is that uh, most companies, that mean personnel will handle some of the accounting roles. Mm -hmm. Things to do with managing the petty cash, things to do with the... Uh, handling uh, the data, things to do with the, maybe handling the assets. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the roles that you will find in a, a, an accounting JD, accounts assistant JD. Mm -hmm. So have those roles in your CV because you can handle them. Mm -hmm. So if you have those roles in you know, your CV, because accounts assistant is uh, the, basically the lowest rank in accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, because accounts clerk, most companies don't have accounts clerk. They do, they start with the accounts assistant. So it's the lowest rank you can start with. So have those basic, because they'll handle basic functions. Mm -hmm. uh, the lowest, the, the basic functions. Okay. Or someone from, with the internship experience will handle. So have them in your CV and have the admin roles in your CV. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you are applying for a job, customize your CV to fit that position. Uh, because uh, I've seen... Uh, there are roles that are, there are roles that are inter inter intermatched, and there are roles that are merged. Sorry, mm -hmm. there are roles that are merged, like uh, accounts and admin, mm -hmm. in a core one role. Mm -hmm. So companies are doing that to save on costs. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, they are looking for, and a company is looking for an accounts and admin assistant, mm -hmm. or a finance and admin assistant. Mm -hmm. They are merging those roles mm -hmm. into one. Mm -hmm. So when they are merging those roles, it means that you'll be doing the admin work and the accounting work. Mm -hmm. So most of the work that you're doing will be admin work, but now a little of accounting work. So 
your CV should match the two. Mm -hmm. mm. So when you have the two roles, the two positions in your CV, it's uh, it's advantageous because uh, your scope in applying for jobs will be bigger. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Jay, we have uh, most uh, most of us out here. We have a perception about HR yeah? Yeah. <laughs> in any organization. Mm. You want to do HR? Ah, mm. Energies in the different uh, lanes. Mm. There's also the aspect of we all humans, yeah, and human behavior dictates that there's a possibility that I can discriminate you in, in regards to where you come from, probably your your uh, just your background and the culture that, that you come from. So let's look at uh, what exactly should I put on my resume and what should I actually leave out? You talked about HR. You know, I think HR are the most important people in any organization. Very true. And uh, I think uh, no organization can thrive without us. And uh, another thing is that um, on a uh, few occasions do we mm -hmm. discriminate. Mm -hmm. What, what I will learn people to understand is that uh, most companies do not have HRs. Mm -hmm. And um, for smaller companies, the SMEs, you'll find that the director, or the, the managing director, or the CEO is the one doing the interviews. Okay. So and there are companies that where the HR are just, uh, just act as clerks. Mm -hmm. So they, they are given the, uh, the decision on what they are someone decides for them on what to do mm -hmm. so what you need to have in your cv is basically your name telephone number mm -hmm. the email address mm -hmm. then uh, work experience the, uh, then work experience yeah. basically pale ju is all details and yeah uh, there are details that you are taught in school uh, things to do with the marital status a marital is it is marital status uh, important no not important age so, Age not important okay. because there are positions that are will uh, there are positions that di will discriminate you based on the age, mm -hmm. and there are positions that will discriminate you based on the marital status. Mm -hmm. That is not uh, it will not be a decision of the HR. Mm -hmm. It might be due to the working conditions of that okay. position or the working hours. And religion. Religion, religion, uh, um, uh, religion. Should, someone should not be discriminated based on the religion mm -hmm. unless now unless it's. Uh, the workplace is a church mm -hmm. where they'll need uh, someone who is a Christian. Mm -hmm. Or if the workplace is, if you're working for a mosque, definitely they'll need a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But uh, most companies will not dismiss you based on the religion also. Okay. So uh, things to do with uh, sex, uh, marital status, age, mm -hmm. which will should not be in your CV. Okay. You have to, unless asked for, mm -hmm. but I've seen, uh, for CV, when I'm doing CVs for uh, Middle East countries or uh, uh, basically uh, abroad, uh, we do we, we do the we add the nationality and then the age because uh, they are so keen on the age mm -hmm. because uh, for them you sign a contract you might sign a long term contract mm -hmm. maybe for three or four years mm -hmm. so they they are so keen on the age okay. uh, we have uh, we'll have your age and nationality mm -hmm. then a picture of yourself oh I was I was about to ask that so a picture is allowed. A picture, picture is allowed for uh, outside the country okay. CVs, or uh, maybe if you are a journalist, mm -hmm. we can have a, a journalist uh, and people in the hospitality industry. Okay. But for an accountant, what, why should you have your picture? <laughs> Show them that this is how I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, for an accountant, we, we don't need your picture. Okay. For a HR, we don't need your picture. Okay. We just need your skills now. Oh, why? Mm. So, what's the worst resume mistake ever that one can actually? Uh, uh, put down? The biggest mistake people do is that uh, they don't understand their resume. Mm -hmm. mm. Someone is in an interview, you tell them to uh, take you through the resume, mm -hmm. they cannot do that. Mm -hmm. They even forget the, the period they worked in certain companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is a uh, that is a, a very simple way of uh, getting yourself eliminated mm -hmm. from the <laughs> the other candidates. Mm -hmm. It's an easy way for do you help us eliminate yourself? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, from uh, I think we have tackled uh, most of this parts or when it comes to resume writing and what is allowed and not. Unless I've, I've left something out, you can add on. N uh, for resume, still. Uh, uh, what what uh, I would like to advise mm -hmm. because most of the job seekers now are the youth the youth are, uh, most of the job seekers are youth mm -hmm. and um, 
recently graduated or uh, maybe graduated in from 2018 onwards, mm -hmm. they have a problem with the, when they are doing their referee, references, they have a problem, a big problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that um, uh, they'll write, most will write their, they will write their uh, lecturers as their referees, references, mm -hmm. someone maybe they never interacted with. Oh. So the lecturer even doesn't know about them. So, because he, he or she has interacted with so many students. Yeah, so. yeah, and maybe there has been no direct interaction. You know, mm -hmm. if you are like, if you are a class rep, mm -hmm. the lecturer is, will easily not know you. Mm -hmm. But if you are a silent follower in the class and maybe you miss classes, mm -hmm. the lecturer can can't uh, can't identify you. So ways to curb that challenge. Yeah. How can we curb that challenge? About so basically, how you can curb that challenge uh, when you are a fresh graduate mm -hmm. from school. Mm -hmm. You can have your class, you can have either your class rep represent you or a school leader, a student leader, mm -hmm. because most student leaders will know all, all students. Mm -hmm. So you can have someone, uh, at least if you don't have any experience, mm -hmm. if you have the attachment experience, mm -hmm. have, if you have the attachment experience, make sure that the attachment experience, uh, when during, during your, your attachment, you have your supervisor as your referee. But if you don't have any experience, have your school, lead, school leader, you can have even, uh, maybe if you have uh, your high school teacher, someone who can remember you well and someone who can vouch for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want an incident as well, but they call this person and they're like, Who is that? Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> we've seen I don't those. Know with that name. Uh, and we've seen also incidents as well by uh, you call a ref mm -hmm. and uh, they give uh, a, negative a negative feedback, feedback. on yeah, oh, yes. about a candidate. So. Do you feel like we should also be calling our reference, the one people who we claim to be a reference? Yeah, sure. And just find out what you people actually have, think about Even us. have your friend call them. Mm -hmm. uh, have your friend call them. Tell them uh, 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 Jay applied for a position mm -hmm. in our organization and uh, you are one of the references. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything you can talk about him? Mm -hmm. you and then you, you're there, you're listening. So okay. that you know, your references might be the reason you're not getting anything. <laughs> I've seen people tell me that. I've yeah, seen, that could be true. I've seen people tell me that, uh, Jay, you know, uh, I've been going for interviews, but I don't get this opportunity. Uh -huh. So I, I always tell them, your CV is not a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're going for interviews, mm -hmm. definitely your CV is not a problem. Mm -hmm. So your problem might be the interview skills mm -hmm. that you don't have, mm -hmm. uh, either the interview skills or your references. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of interview, skill, uh, interview skills, uh, how when you ask questions, I know people, uh, interviewers ask different questions and we are always, you know, having butterflies when we get into these particular rooms just for the interview. When we are asked a question, should we uh, uh, respond uh, with giving a storyline or examples of what you have done or should we give the diplomatic answers which are just general <laughs> and just keep quiet just to be safe? Maybe an example of a question. <laughs> Um, let's see. So, for this particular position that you're playing, what are you bringing to the table? Mm, what are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. So, one thing job seekers should understand is that um, an interview is just any, like any other conversation. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can happen is that they can deny you the job. Mm -hmm. That is the worst that can happen. But they can't take anything away from you. That's true. I've seen job seekers who feel stressed. They call me after an interview and they're like, it was not a must that you get this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I what I believe is that it's a always a learning experience. Mm -hmm. An interview is always a learning experience. You can't go for five interviews and uh, still fail the sixth interview. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this the interviews, uh, when you go for interviews, they repeat the same questions. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, a different style, mm -hmm. but they repeat the same questions. So when you asked about what you bring on the table, mm -hmm. you've, it means that you should have done enough research about the company. Correct. Yeah. So it goes back to you researching the company. Yeah, research about the company. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, a company like, um, uh, let's say a company like maybe Equity. Mm -hmm. Equity, Equity Bank. Huh? Mm -hmm. Equity Bank has, uh, has been uh, having issues maybe, or uh, you've been reading about their profit and loss, uh, the, the profit they've made within a certain year. Talk mm -hmm. about uh, maybe you, maybe you are working for a different bank, huh? mm -hmm. and now you're coming to Equity Bank. Mm -hmm. You can also talk about your achievements in the, the other bank mm -hmm. that you can do, you can bring on board in okay. this other organization. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say like, when I was working for JCVs, mm -hmm. I implemented a new system mm -hmm. 
uh, that reduce the time frame for uh, working on CVs, assist him to help in working on CV, in automatically working on CVs so that it doesn't take the three days, the normal three days, but now it takes one day. Okay. Yeah. So when you're coming on board, mm -hmm. you are able to bring that knowledge and skills with you. So you bring these skills, mm -hmm. tell them the skill you are bringing on board and, and how it will help the organization. Oh yeah, in that particular position that you're applying. Yeah, yeah, for. yeah. And I have a question that it, this one actually makes people uh, go round and round and round. Tell us about yourself, which is a very, it can sound like a really simple question, mm. but yet uh, most people find it difficult to answer. So in a summary format, what should we highlight on this particular question? Tell us about yourself. Uh, when asked about, tell us about yourself. It's a very simple question, yes. and that, that question is, uh, I always tell job seekers, this is the best time to sell yourself, mm -hmm. and it's the best time also to, when you respond to this question well, you'll have answered some of the questions that will, will be asked ahead mm -hmm. after this question. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about, tell us about yourself, uh, if, you have a, if you are an experienced person, mm -hmm. Make sure the first thing that makes an employer invite you for an interview is the experience. Mm -hmm. So talk about your name, mm -hmm. go to your experience, mm -hmm. then talk about your personal attributes, mm -hmm. uh, name, experience, academic. Sorry. Should I brag about my achievements as well? Academics, uh -huh. uh, personal attributes, achievements. You'll talk about it when, because that question will come. Okay. On why should we hire you? Oh, wow. When, why, when, when asked about why you should hire you, mm -hmm. you can now talk about your achievements. Mm -hmm. While I was at this organization, I managed this and this. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, tell us about yourself. Start with your name, experience, academics, then attributes. So, people will not, uh, most people will not understand where to get the attributes from. In any advert, mm -hmm. there are places where we have the requirements part. Mm -hmm. The requirements part is where You'll see the uh, leadership skills, analytical skills, mm -hmm. customer service skills, mm -hmm. interpersonal skills, or a team player. Mm -hmm. So those those are the attributes you should tell, talk about in an interview mm -hmm. when you asked about tell us about mm -hmm. yourself. And um, experience you can if you've been working as an accountant mm -hmm. and uh, maybe your last position is an accountant or your current position an accountant, mm -hmm. you also act as an admin. Major so much on the accounting experience. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about your experience, mm -hmm. tell us about yourself. Mm -hmm. My name is Walemba Jay. I'm currently working as a, a CV writer at JCVs. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> I've, been doing, uh, I've been doing CV writing for the last mm -hmm. three, four years. Mm -hmm. And in my daily job as a CV writer, mm -hmm. I ensure that, now you can mention some of the responsibilities that you tackle that are similar to that position you're applying for. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And they ask you, how much do you want us to pay you for this particular role? Now, when it comes to salary, mm -hmm. salary negotiation, mm -hmm. uh, also do research about the company. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that will determine <laughs> there are so many factors to determine. Did I say that? I don't remember there is a meme that has been going around mm. when you ask, uh, uh, like, how much do you want us to pay? Mm. And then there's a gun put on, on, the, on your head. How much do you want us to pay? <laughs> and then you're like, how much, how much budget does this role have? Yeah. So. <laughs> no, so there are so many factors that will determine uh, the salary you will ask for. Mm -hmm. There are people who are working in very toxic environments. Yes. So they just want to leave. Mm -hmm. That's factor number one. Mm -hmm. There's someone who is earning 100,000 and is an, in a very comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. So coming to, a, to going to another company, mm -hmm. you'll have to consider that the environment and the salary is earning. Mm -hmm. So he'll ask for a much higher pay. Okay. He might ask for 100 or 100, 150 or 200. Mm -hmm. Then the other factor is that uh, how do you know, like, you have not short list, like, short changed yourself? Because when you when you get into the company, now you're working with other people, and then you find out that people you're working with is the aspect of bonus, the aspect of uh, you could have even gotten a higher pay than what you actually suggest or say. No, companies have structures, mm -hmm. and if if you ask for fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and the company structure is. 150 yes they sh they will st still pay you based on that mm -hmm. unless it's an sme mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because companies with the structures they'll always pay you as per their salary structure mm -hmm. yeah okay. so 
uh, about salary, do enough research about the position mm -hmm. uh, in the industry. It's, let's say if it's in the bank industry, you can just, you, when you go online, mm -hmm. there's a site called Glassdoor. Mm -hmm. Glassdoor, you ask for, you Google like um, bank teller, mm -hmm. salaries in Kenya, mm -hmm. it will give you options or a range. Okay. So you can work based on that. Mm -hmm. Accountant salaries in Kenya, you can work on that. But um, I've seen industries and uh, there are industries that are poorly paying uh, positions like accountants because uh, to be honest, as a recruiter and a CV writer, we have so many accountants and HR professionals. Mm -hmm. So many, the market is flooded. Mm -hmm. So the salary is so poor. Okay. Mm, I've so seen. it boils down to, on a personal level, do your research and, uh, about the company and just find out more about... Uh, yeah, do your research about the company, basically the industry. Okay. Uh, if it's, uh, let's say, the manufacturing industry, mm -hmm. how much is our company is paying mm -hmm. in the manufacturing industry. So, but I've also talked about uh, the company culture. Yes. The company culture is something that is, uh, you know, there are people who go, who get into companies and uh, they realize that we, they mess big time. Mm. The culture does not, uh, they cannot thrive in that culture, they cannot, whereby uh, you used to work from eight to five, mm -hmm. you get into a company that's working from eight, eight to eight in the evening. Mm. So it becomes tricky for you. Mm -hmm. So this person cannot survive here. Okay. Or there are people who will look at, uh, there, are, there are people, there are job seekers who will look at, uh, they are seeking for jobs and they are like, I don't want a job where I can work over the weekend. Mm. I don't want a job where uh, I can work uh, on, sa on Saturdays. You know Saturday is a working day. Mm -hmm. As per the labor law, Saturday is a working day. Mm -hmm. But most job seekers will tell you that I don't want a job where I, c I, want, uh, no, uh, I don't want to work. Yeah, so. All right, as we wind up, take us to the right attitude when uh, you know seeking for a job and also how to just market oneself in regards to different industry that one is into. Is in. So, for example, yesterday I was in another forum and uh, I'm in another forum and uh, I saw a job seeker talk about, uh, I'm not a HR, um, I've done this and this course. Mm. So bring, uh, give me a job. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is not the right attitude to approach any job, any, any employer. Mm -hmm. So when you are marketing yourself, mm -hmm. consider yourself, consider your career. Consider, the first thing is to consider your career. Mm -hmm. Am I currently working? If I'm working, yes. Am I in my career? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it, uh, am I passionate about what I'm doing? Uh, like uh, you've done accounting, you are in a sales industry. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Currently, if you are in a sales industry, that means that uh, before you get into accounts, it will take you some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you get an opportunity, maybe to volunteer as an accountant in an organization, why not take it up? Yeah, I know it's hard. You've been earning money, mm -hmm. but it's hard to volunteer just to volunteer without pay. But that is the best thing you can do for yourself. Okay. The best thing you can do for yourself: have the three months, the volunteer for the three months. Mm -hmm. Then, after the three months, you can you, the 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 company you are volunteering in might give you a permanent job. And it also builds a profile. Yeah, yeah, it also builds a profile. So, Jay, where, where can people find you on? Uh, on probably on your website or social media accounts or how they can reach out to you just to keep this conversation going if they have any other further questions. Yeah, I have an office at Mindleo House just opposite my anniversary towers. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I'm on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Walemba J. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook, Walemba J. Mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram at JCVs mm -hmm. or Walemba. Uh, then uh, my website is www.jcvs.co.ke or you can drop us an email info at jcvs.co.ke. Thank you yeah. very much, Jay, for creating your time to be there. So taking us to a couple of handles and mistakes that we should actually avoid when yeah. we're seeking for a job opportunity. Yeah. Anytime. All right, thank you very much. So that is Walemba Jay, who is the CEO and founder of JCVs. We are looking at job uh, hunting mistakes that you and I uh, can actually avoid. At Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. My name is Michelle Ashira, and you can follow me across all my social at Michelle Ashira. We'll be right back so much right here on Wine in the morning.